Good morning, Stampers. I'm Meg from Loven Stamps, and this is Maker Mornings with Meg. Today is Tuesday, which is kind of unusual for us, so hopefully they're not throwing off too much. Um, but we'll be here Tuesday and Thursday this week, um, and then possibly a surprise next week. Um, but then we'll be back on Tuesday and Thursday again at the end of August, beginning of September. So September, let's see, August 30th and September 1st. So I look forward to seeing you those days, but today's lesson is kind of a cool one. Um, we are going to use our blending brushes here, and I'm gonna give you um, two different ways to use these blending brushes uh, that have nothing, well, they're not using blending brushes on paper. So we're gonna go through that. And I'm also going to walk you through the card design process that I used when I came up with this card. I've been looking back through comments on um, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you guys for your comments, by the way. But I've been looking back through the comments and one of the things that I see often is people saying, oh my gosh, I love like, I love the process of designing a card. And so I wanted to bring that to you guys again because um, it seems like it really resonates with people, but it's nice to kind of see like how like I'll look at something and then change it up or do something a little bit different based on what I'm seeing and then kind of talk that through out loud so you can hear what that process is. So, um, and I find that actually making myself talk through that makes me a better stamper. So, you know, if you're sitting at home like, oh, maybe I'd be a better stamper if I talked about it too, talk to yourself. So talk to yourself when you're stamping. Um, anyway, just a thought, I don't know. I don't know who's around when you're stamping. Maybe it's best if you don't talk to yourself. Uh, but if you do, maybe you should be a demonstrator and I would be happy to help you get started with that. So anyway, um, I have this fun card to show you guys and I didn't even tell you the stamp set. The stamp set is Wisteria Wishes, which is really pretty. And I just got this um, as one of my half price items. When you have a larger order, um, you can actually get a half price item as one of your stamp rewards features. So um, make sure you ask me about that if you have questions. All right, we have a lot of people for an off morning. So hi, Jennifer and Doris and Cindy and Kathy and Pam and Sue and Elaine and Tanya and Trish. Um, my gosh, really like a lot of people for an off morning. So I'm glad you guys found me. Hey, Sheila. Um, are you guys ready to get stamping? So we're gonna walk through a card. We're gonna do some blending brush techniques. We're going to um, show like I have kind of pathways is like always thinking, oh, I want to go this way. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. Eep, let's try this way instead. So I think you guys will um, enjoy the process. All right. And also happy Tuesday. I've been so confused. I feel like today must be Monday because usually I see you guys on Monday. It's, it's just been kind of bizarro. All right. So what are we starting with? Like I said, we're using um, Wisteria Wishes here. And let's see. I'm going to pull. Oops. There we go. Um, I'm gonna use Wisteria Wishes here, and then we are going to um, go ahead and do some stamping first. So a lot of times I'll start with the um, catalog to just sort of see sort of a starting point for things. And I really liked um, this card here that was featured in the book. And I really like this color combination, although um, I decided to go with a different green here. But I liked this idea of these flowers here. Um, these have a name and I can't remember what they're called. So if you remember, if you are a much better floral identifier than I, um, let me know. They're kind of, they're not like lupines because they're a little smaller. I don't remember what they're called. Um, so leave a comment. You guys are great about that stuff. All right. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and do our stamping first. And this is where our blending brush is going to come in. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how this works. Because what I wanna do is I wanna create that two-tone effect. And I'm going to um, do that by inking up my stamp in two colors. Now, um, you could use your markers on your stamp. That works too, the Stampin' Right markers. Um, but I'm actually going to uh, kind of speed this along a little bit by inking up just the tips here in the, um, what color is this? So saffron. And then um, remember to kind of turn your stamp as you go so you can kind of see how I'm managing to get like different heights and stuff on these different pieces by turning and getting it on there. Um, and then I'm going to take the bottom part and I'm going to ink it here on my flirty flamingo pad. Let's see. I'm going to do this one like that. 
and this one like that. And I'm gonna show you what I don't like. <laughs> so this is what not to do first, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this on here and get that done. And what I get is this harsh line here where it goes transitions from the yellow to the um, flamingo, and I don't love that. So instead, I'm gonna show you how to use your blending brushes. Let me clean this off a little. I'm gonna show you how to use your blending brushes to get a much nicer transition line. So again, I'm gonna start off by inking my stamp the same way. I'm gonna get those um, tops of those flowers there. And then I'm gonna ink the bottom the same way too. Oops, remember, leave your stamp down and put your, or leave your ink pad down and put your stamp on it. Much easier way to get, see what you're doing. All right, and now I'm gonna use my blending brushes because I want to soften that transition line. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my blending brush by swirling, which normally I would do to go onto my cardstock, but instead I'm gonna tap on my stamp, okay? So I'm just tapping, and I'm gonna tap all the way kind of from the bottom so that I get rid of some of that dark line that was down here from inking and go up just a little through that transition into the tips of the flowers. Now, this is a little bit lighter um, in ink, so I'm gonna go ahead to get my best image possible. I love to use my um, piercing pad. So I have a foam pad underneath here, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that, and that's gonna give me the best contact between my ink and my paper. And now we have um, a little bit more transition here. You can kind of see that blend in there between the colors. It's a little bit less like this harsh line, one color, two color, okay? All right, so now we have that, and I'm gonna take this before I do anything else, um, and I'm gonna go ahead, well, I'm gonna set it aside for one second. We're, we'll come back, I guess, not before I do anything else. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my stamp here in um, Parakeet Party, which is my fave green and for bright, cheery things. It used to be Grand Apple Green, but I love Parakeet. It's just um, a little bit lighter in color and a little bit um, less, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit more electric. I really uh, am enjoying it, so new in color. All right, and then these guys, we are going to die cut. So the dies for Wisteria Wishes um, have both the coordinating dies that match here, and you can see my little bit of washi tape on there, which is my um, go-to for lining up my dies. And then in the die set, there are also um, some dies that cut like silhouette shapes. And I can kind of show you what those look like here. So they are these um, big silhouette shapes like this. And you can overlay them, um, you can overlap them. This is sort of the die here that fits over this one. So you can have two-toned flowers um, and then this pretty branch with the embossing on it and stuff. This is a really uh, fun die set for adding some florals to stuff. So we'll die cut those and through the magic of television there we have our um, our pieces done. All right so now um, like I said I'm going to come back with our florals and before I put those away they have a little ink on them left. Um, not a lot because I've already stamped them but I'm going to use them to add some floral for inside our card but I want this to be really subtle like an echo of what's on the front of our card. So there you can see how light that is compared to the first round stamping. So um, this technique, if you do this, this is called stamping off where you stamp on scrap paper and then um, come back so uh, and stamp it again without re-inking. So that gives you um, some really neat options for envelopes or insides of cards. You can write across this and it wouldn't obscure your handwriting at all. Let's see, um, oh, Kathy says blending brushes are the best. Totally agree. We're still gonna use them again. And Betty said, remember when we thought Granny Apple Green was bright? Yes, I know. It's funny though, right? Those kind of electric um, 80s fluorescent, almost fluorescent colors, they're totally, totally here. So speaking of which, here's a whole piece of Parakeet Party. So let's look at our card and putting this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half as our card base. And then we are going to kind of look at this on here, okay? So we have our pieces kind of just like this. And one of the things I like to do is sort of be inspired by other cards that I've made that I have sitting around or um, cards from the catalog. And so I kind of like this vertical design here where we have sort of an element that is here on a panel um, and then a little greeting kind of off to the side and some embellishments. So we're gonna kind of mimic this. Um, this is that Sweet Songbirds 
set and punch that just came out um, this past summer. So love that one. That was from Maker Mornings with Meg episode early on, I think. But I want to give this a background of some kind. And I happened to have handy um, my paper here. This is the um, a wash and beauty paper for a card that I made uh, last week. And it has sort of these neutrally, well, not neutral, but these sort of um, not, they're basic design patterns. I need a name for these. I don't know. Does anybody have a good name? These basic design patterns. And they include these texture sheets here um, in the, this is Blushing Bride and this is Parakeet Party slash Granny Apple Green. Um, oh, Sue says Lemon Lime Twist. Yeah, that's like a blast from the past. So I decided to go ahead and take this paper here. I love the texture on it. It's not going to distract from our background, but it really um, helps to add some fun extra interest to the front of our card. So this is gonna go on like so, all right? Now we also are going to need a greeting of some kind to go with this. And the greetings in um, Wisteria Wishes are terrific. Um, there is this one, faith is about trusting, happiness grows within. To a friend who's all kinds of wonderful, hang in there and even when you don't understand. So these are separated, so you could use them like one in the front and one inside, or you could put them together. Um, but I'm gonna go with this to a friend who's all kinds of wonderful, which could be a birthday card or a thank you card or pretty much anything. And I've got this one inked up, and we're gonna go ahead and stamp this in, uh, I'm gonna show you what I did first. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it in, uh, Flirty Flamingo on a piece of um, cardstock here to die cut. And let's see, got that there. So here's our greeting. And now um, to add to our card, a lot of times I like to use like a fun, like a circle element or a tag element, some kind of die cut shape to go across here. And I pulled out one of my trusty um, go-to die sets. This is the um, tags, tailor-made tags. Um, it comes with two kinds of dies here, and I've got them sort of mixed up. There's sort of the um, fancy kind here with the extra, this, you know, just a little extra here. And then there's the um, sort of standard set kind here um, where it is just the um, square corners here, just to tag cut. But either way, they have this nice... Um, dotted uh, stitch line around the edge, which is um, just really trendy. And I love the extra element that that stitch line adds. So, plus it has little reinforcers if you wanna add those. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna go with the extra one, cause I feel like the extra um, up here has the same vibe as our Wisteria die cut flowers versus the one that's a little bit more plain. And we're gonna die cut this here. Ta-da! And through the magic of television, I've got um, a die cut tag right here. So we're gonna put this kind of off to the side and we need some kind, when you have a tag, um, you can't leave it empty. I'm pretty sure there's like a big stamping rule about that. So I pulled out um, my uh, in color Baker's Twine because I love Baker's Twine with these. It's just tiny, it's the right scale, um, it's delicate. And I thought, you know what, the sweet sorbet, this is really pretty. Um, and a nice match. I could use Lemon Line Twist, but I really wanna bring out the pink color here from our Flamingo, and this is a pretty fair match. But it's striped, and I didn't think the stripe was exactly what I wanted. So I thought, mm, okay, let's see. We have our blending brush, and we have this other Baker's Twine, which is the Essentials Pack, which comes in a whole mess of neutrals, including white. And so, you see what's gonna happen? Can you predict our, <laughs> our baker's twine and uh, blending brush uh, sandwich here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a length of the baker's twine here in my ink pad, and I'm just gonna roll it around with my blending brush until I get the color that I want. Now this is one of those blending brush things you can do as much or as little color as you want. Um, it is going to have a tendency to want to stain your fingers. So give it a second um, to dry. I'm gonna clip this off here. There we go. And then I'm gonna clip this off and just toss this little scrap so that it doesn't um, stain the rest of my baker's twine. And then we have this here, baker's twine to match our card, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna bring this, we're gonna tie a bow here. And I like this, 
But I feel like if you've ever watched my videos, you know that I am always, oh, Doris got it. Yay, color the twine, color the twine. Um, you know that I am always a big, like I want this to be centered and anchored. It feels a little bit floaty right now, right? We have this big field of green texture with this image on it that's, that's just kind of sitting there. So how are we gonna connect the two? And I thought, you know what, vellum. Vellum is a great way to add a layer to something without distracting from the background. I don't wanna cover up this whole piece of pretty textured designer paper, um, but to give something a little more anchor and a little more center. And instead of reaching for my vellum cardstock that comes in full sheets, I reached for the Lovely Layers vellum, which is comes in this little um, pack. They are three and three quarters by five inches, so they're perfect card layer size. And I just used this recently on a card that we did. I'm looking behind me, if my voice sounds weird. Oh, I used it um, on one of our cards for uh, here. I used it on one of our cards for the um, Love and Stamp monthly tutorials for August, the um, Ringed with Love cards. And we used a little piece of it here, just a little blank piece to add this layer. Um, a nice light vellum. This is like a vellum paper versus the vellum cardstock. It's not as heavy, so you can see through a little bit more easily. Um, it's a little lighter to work with. But the other vellums in here have these fantastic, like, shape um, and design on them. So let's look at those. This is half the pack is about, I don't know, I didn't count, half the pack or more than half is plain, but then you have these pages of fun um, pattern like this. So there's sort of a mountain one, which actually, I mean, it's not a bad idea. This is sort of like a mountain flower. Did anybody come up with the name of it? Maybe not yet. Um, we have the circle, which would definitely center, um, but we also have these little speckles here. And so let's look at these little speckles and see what happens if we slide this underneath here. I love how the speckles um, are sort of creating a circle there. Do you see how they're like focusing in that blank um, negative space in the middle is very much like the focal point because um, it's the open space. So we're gonna add this here and then I wanna keep my tag down um, so that we still have this open space connected. If I put it here, it fills all the open space and it kind of like, it, it kind of distracts a little bit from the circle. Do you sort of see what I mean? If I put it down here, then we still have this sort of circle in the background. It's really subtle. I don't know, maybe I'm making it up. <laughs> tell, tell me what you think. Uh, but then our, our bow is gonna go there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna stain their paper, so I'm gonna leave it off for the moment. Okay, so I liked this, uh, I'll put it on. I liked this, but I feel like the gray in the background doesn't match the rest of the card, right? It's the only time I'm using that um, It color. It doesn't bring out anything else. It's kind of like an oddness, okay? So instead of doing our tag in this color, I decided that I needed to bring in another gray um, to match this background, and I brought in um, my basic gray ink pad, and we'll go ahead and stamp this one in our basic gray here. And now we're going to um, do a die cut. So I'm gonna bring this over here and let's see, I'm still here. I just didn't bring my thing on camera. There's a lot of stuff on my table, so I'm not gonna move my die cut machine over for the moment. I'll just die cut it and bring it back. All right, so here now we have um, a gray scale tag that helps to bring that color. So we've used the color more than once um, and that really brings that color into our card instead of making it like stand out as like some kind of, wait, weird, where did that come from kind of thing, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and tie our bow. Um, remember that you are um, going to get inky fingers from working with this. So I wanna touch things as little as possible. Uh, and then I can go wash my hands or um, the Stampin' Chamois is super handy. Oh, see, I got ink spread on my tag. That's okay, we'll pretend it's not there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my chamois to clean off my fingers. Um, when you have a bow, remember to keep your loops teeny um, in a way that complements your project. So big loops um, sometimes are fun, but I often think that big loops make something seem out of scale. So if you're ever looking at a bow and you're like, eh, I don't like that, um, go ahead and try 
um, moving your loops, make your loops a little smaller. And then uh, I'm gonna just kind of get my fingers a little bit cleaner here. There we go. Chamois is great for that. It's like an ink magnet, so. All right, so now we have our pieces here kind of ready to put together. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over to the back side. You know I'm not a big like fussy attacher kind of person. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a Stampin' Dimensional on the back of each of these to hold the stem onto the flower. And then we're gonna put this down on our card layer here. All right, so I'm gonna kind of hold this. Now I haven't attached these things because if you've ever worked with vellum, you know that you have to be careful about attaching it. You have to cover your, cover your tracks, so to speak. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take our tag here and put a dimensional on the back of it and add this down here to our card. I wanna keep my greeting actually on the card. All right, now when I turn this over, I can see where I can put my glue because any place um, that I add glue is gonna show through on the front of my card. Fortunately, I have lots of area that is covered by our flowers, so I can use those spots as my glue locations. All right, and I'm gonna layer this on our textured paper. Um, and so you can see how this vellum is so great um, in the uh, card. Uh, Sue says, drag wet chine in the fold of paper. Oh, I could, I'd like to brush it off. Oh, Trish said delphinium. They could be delphinium. And somebody said, oh, Lana says lupine, Alaskan fireweed, maybe. I'm gonna have to look up the ones that I'm thinking of. Maybe I am thinking of lupines. They're a little bit smaller and tighter than delphiniums, right? No, well, anyway. All right, oh yeah, and Tanya says she likes the tag for the color. Okay, this is good. I have some florals to look up now, so thanks, guys. All right, so uh, I've got our bow and our pieces here ready to go down. I'm gonna flip this over and add some glue to the back. Um, I am a multi-purpose liquid glue, huge fan uh, for attaching card layers because it lets me shift them a teeny bit if I need to. So if I set it down and realize like, oh, it's a little bit off left or right, um, I can still move that while it's dry, or drying. Okay. All right, so there we have that. Now we can come back to the inside of our card here. Remember that really pretty faint, like stamped off flower set? Um, I feel like we need greetings and I wanted to add some birthday greetings from here. So I decided to grab my Inspired Thoughts um, stamp set, which is a very nice, um, covers lots of occasion, covers um, sending healing thoughts, um, sympathy, uh, all kinds of different things. And this is a great birthday message um, or kind of uh, retirement, could be anything. It's time to be remembered, to feel appreciated and to know you're celebrated. I just think that's a wonderful sentiment um, that all of us need to hear. So I'm gonna grab my um, stamp here and I'm gonna go ahead and use my basic gray. Now, when I'm using red rubber, I always do like a test um, to make sure that it's gonna stamp straight the way I expect, okay? That's why grid paper is great. I'm gonna line it up and imagine that this is my card and, and yep, it's pretty straight. Okay, so grid paper is actually something that you can order for yourself. It comes as a pad of 100 sheets if you didn't realize, but there is our inside of our card. Okay, so we're not quite done because we still have to add our embellishment bling to the front, but let's go ahead and add our greeting inside. You notice also, I don't worry too much about going all the way to the edges of my card layers. I'm okay with the, with the edges just sticking out or sticking up a teeny bit. That doesn't bother me. All right, so remember with the green lid, multi-purpose liquid glue, though you have to give it a second to grab, it doesn't grab instantly, so I don't wanna shift that. All right, and then I love the way these edges stick up intentionally. So this is not gonna come off. This um, glue is definitely gonna hold it down, um, but it is pretty there. And if you're wondering like, uh, Meg, did you notice that your tag doesn't fit in your envelope? <laughs> yes, I did notice that. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna trim this. I find it easiest to trim from the backside so that I can exactly see where the edge of my card is. So now we have our image trimmed there, okay? Now we need some kind of um, bling to go with this for certain. And so I was thinking what matches, like what little rhinestones cover or color um, match. And the um, these are from the Storybook Gnome Suite in the um, July to December mini. 
and I have like whipped through these sort of peachy pink color. Um, I love them. And we're gonna go ahead and use some on this card too. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab my uh, multi-purpose uh, or my tool. What is this thing called all of a sudden? I'm like, uh, take your pick tool. Goodness, it was like a Monday, not quite a week thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these to put on here. And let's see, I'm gonna add a large one also. So I'm sliding it, whoops, on here to pick it up. And then um, the slide kind of detaches it from the background paper. And then I can just set it down there on its adhesive. All right, so that, whew, gives us our, I feel like it's a Monday, our Monday card on Tuesday. So that gives us our Tuesday card. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, on the inside, I did another version of this where I stamped it in um, the Flirty Flamingo um, instead. So that's certainly another option. But since I had the gray out here, the, the basic gray for our greeting, I decided to go ahead and do that. And you can see um, with your twine, you can just get a little variation in color. This one was a little bit lighter. Um, this one's a little darker. I like both of them. I think whatever you feel like to match your card. But remember um, our two blending brush tips um, and tricks, the one to color your baker's twine and the other to soften the transition um, here on our stamping so that you're not getting this really harsh um, line here between the two colors. You get a little bit more transition um, between the two. So that gives you some other options. All right, oh, Sue says she likes the use of the large vellum. Yes, um, a great way to um, use that. Oh, I just realized one of these cards is Granny Apple Green and the other one is Parakeet Party. Ooh, well, I don't, I don't know, what do you guys think? Parakeet Party or Granny Apple Green? I can't quite decide, actually. I, I have to say that I kind of like both. I don't know, here's one, here's the other. Here's one, here's the other. I think I like the contrast between the designer series paper and the parakeet party a little bit on this one. Um, I don't know, I would, I would go with both of them. I don't think there's a wrong answer. So just in stamping, there's often not a wrong answer. It's just a different technique or a different look, so. All right, let's see. Oh, Lana says parakeet, Sue says both, Tanya says parakeet. <laughs> Yeah, now we're starting like a whole uh, a whole debate, right? Parakeet Party, Grand Apple Green. Parakeet Party, at Grand Apple Green. They're definitely different colors. When they first came out, I wasn't too certain. I kind of felt like there was a little bit of redundancy between the two, but they really are pretty different, so. All right, guys, that is our Tuesday. Like I said, I'll be back on Thursday with another Maker Mornings with Meg for August. And uh, then I'll let you know for next week. Otherwise, we'll be back the last week of August for certain. So, um, oh, Elaine says Parakeet Party too. I, parakeet Party seems to be uh, the, except for Sue who said yes, both. I think Parakeet Party seems to be the favorite, the fan favorite. So, all right. Well, everyone have a wonderful Tuesday. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, there are links in the video description to learn more about Love and Stamps Perks Points and monthly tutorials. Um, kits from last month are arriving in people's doorsteps or, or on their mailbox. So I hope you guys are excited about those. And tutorials for this month will be um, starting to uh, come out this week. So if you're waiting on an order confirmation for that, don't worry, it's coming. So. All right, guys, have a super fab day, and I will see you again on Thursday. Happy stamping.